What's going on, you guys? It's be your boy, Scotty, and we're here for an impromptu Bitch Are You Serious, okay? Um, I wasn't going to start back doing Bitch Are You Serious videos until the new year when I was settled in, my, in our new home or whatever, but there was a situation that happened last night that made me feel like I needed to do this, this um, Bitch Are You Serious today. And it's basically like a farewell, in a sense, if you get what I mean. For those of you that have been a part of Team Scotty for many, many years and have been very familiar with my Bitch Are You Serious segment, so I'll, and, and if you aren't familiar with this segment, Bitch Are You Serious is basically where I talk about the what the fuck moments that, have, that has happened in my life. Things that make you go, Bitch Are You Serious? You know what I mean? That's what this segment is all about. One of the more classic stories that I told within this segment was the Molly the Maid story that involved me, one of my good friends, and the woman that he was dating. Everybody knows the story. Whenever I would talk about Molly the Maid, everybody would be on their feet waiting to see what happened next. The origin of the story is this guy I was friends with was actually my best friend's baby daddy's brother. I was close to my best friend's baby daddy, and I also became close to his brother. It sounds ghetto as fuck, but that's just the nature of the relationship, okay? So, we got to be very cool. We got to be super cool. You know what I mean? And then he got involved with this woman. This woman was every bit of, because at the time, I was like 24 when this stuff started happening. So, she was probably 10 or 11 years older than I was at the time. And um, for whatever reason, she did not like me. She hated me for whatever reason. And come to find out, she didn't like me because I was gay. Come to find out, she didn't like me because she thought that I wanted to fuck her man. That's what this was all about. She was insecure with herself about me and her man, my friend, being in a relationship, being, being in a friendship. She felt very insecure about our friendship. And... To top it all off, he had gone to jail, and once he went to jail, things had turned, made, you know, gotten, you no, know, took a turn for the worse between me and her. It was still going on. She was still trying to fight me, still following me, still stalking me, still doing whatever she wanted to do towards me. And, you know, once he got out of jail, we tried to reconnect, but she would not allow us to be friends. She would not allow us to be friends at all. Like, we could not be friends, period. So, for my own sanity, I walked away from the, from the friendship. Um, I walked away. Not that I wanted to walk away, but I walked away. Because I felt like if I, if I remained in that circle, I was going to continuously be stalked, continuously be harassed, Continu continuously having drama in my life that I didn't really need, drama that I didn't ask for, drama that really didn't need to be my drama. So I decided to keep my distance from him. And then, you know, when I kept my distance from him, there was things that was being said to me from other people. Like people were saying that, you know, he was saying, oh, I don't fuck with that faggot ass nigga. I don't do this. I don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't rock with him like that. He ain't shit to me, whatever. You know, that's the type of vibes I was getting. But when I would confront him about it, he was like, oh, no, that never happened. I, I would never say nothing like that. You know, I fuck with you the long way or whatever. And, you know, it was it was a lot of um, he say, she say, miscommunication. I don't know if he ever said that stuff or not. I really don't know. But... It kept us apart and it kind of drove a wedge between us, starting with her and the things that people were saying in the streets. It kind of caused a wedge, you know, created a wedge between me and him. I wouldn't say that it ended. I wouldn't say that we had any bad blood. I wouldn't say that. But it was kind of like I don't really deal with him like that. And... For whatever reason, maybe about a year ago, I was on Instagram and um, I started following him. He had a new page on Instagram. For whatever reason, I started following him and I liked his picture and I commented on his picture and he responded. And even then, um, maybe, um, maybe a year before that, I was in Atlanta for the K. Michelle concert. 
As a matter of fact, all that was the same year. 2018, that was the same year. I was in Atlanta for the Kate Michelle concert, and he was on live, and I would, I came in there, and, you know, I was talking to him. He was going off about some shit, you know what I mean? Because he, you know, he was Gemini to his soul. He was going to fuck off about something. And I was trying to calm him down, and he did calm down. But we didn't talk anymore after that until maybe a couple of months later when I found him on Instagram again, and I spoke to him, and he spoke back. That's the last time we really had an interaction. But any time after that, if I saw him post a picture on Instagram, I liked the picture. If I saw him post something on Facebook, I liked it. Well, this morning, I was told that this friend was shot and killed last night. While I was at work, I was told this. And um, it's been on my mind like all day. It has been, and um, I I feel I feel guilty in a sense. I feel bad in a sense because I feel like we were so close, and this person, this thing, would not allow us to be close. And I felt like this thing. Drove a wedge between me and him. And I'm not going to lie to you. The entire time I'm sitting there thinking about this after my friend texted me telling me that he passed away. I The first thing I could think about was Molly the maid. The first thing I could think about was that bitch. I felt like if it wasn't for her, we would still be close friends. If it wasn't for her, we, it would not be so much distance between me and him. If it wasn't for her. But you never know why God takes certain people out of your life. But what I do know is that I really cared about him deeply. I loved him as a person. And it's sad that his life was taken away so soon, so suddenly. And um, I really hate that we never had the chance to really hash it out, really have that conversation, really just mend fences the way we should have instead of just being like, oh, you know, you know, being distant. Me just popping up and saying something to him and him popping back up saying something to me. You know, we never really had that conversation. We never really just talked about everything that happened. And that's the thing that bothers me with this whole situation. We never really had the chance to say, I love you. I'm sorry that it happened that way. It should have never happened that way. It's sad. You know, and... um. I was at work all day thinking about this, and I was just sitting there thinking, like, you know, I got to tell my Team Scotty people, especially the OGs that knows about this story. You know what I mean? And if you're new to my channel, go back and look at it. The first one that I did about her was, like, a, I called her a feel rat bitch or something like that. Like, anytime I said something about a feel rat bitch, I was talking about her. So if you want to go back, just type in, bitch, are you serious in your search box and all my, type in, bitch, are you serious? And Mr. Steel standing right next to it, and all my segments will come through. All my series will come through for this segment right here. So, um, yeah, it's sad. You know what I mean? And this is yet another death. You know what I mean? I just lost my cousin Poochie in September. And here we are in December and I'm losing somebody else. So, and there's this thing, this ongoing thing with me when it comes down to me talking about people that's dying. Scotty always got somebody dying around him all the time. He talking about somebody. It's not my fault. I can't help that people die around me like this. It, it, it like for the last maybe two years, I've seen death after death after death. It's been so much death around me for the last couple of years. Like 2017, I lost my aunt Minnie. That was the first death I experienced in maybe two years. Um, 2018, um, I lost my uncle Vest. Um, in 2019. Which is this year. I lost my cousin Poochie. Um, I lost him. It's a lot. I've, I've really experienced a lot of death over the last... As a matter of fact, no, I'm not even going to say 2017. It's been 2015. I lost my mentor in 2015. I lost my cousin Gene in 2016. And I lost my friend Jana in 2016. Then you go into 2017, 18, and 19. So I have been you know, receiving bad news about people for the last four years of my life. And it's a lot. And it's just too much. So many people are dying around me. And there's more reason for me to get myself together. So with that being said, you guys,
This is my impromptu bitch. Are you serious? And I'll talk to you later. Peace out.